Hey everybody, welcome to CLC Online. My name is Andrea and these are my kids, Jonathan and Marissa. Hi. Hey Jonathan, do you know what today is? Uh, Sunday? Well, yeah, but besides that, you didn't forget why today was special, did you? Of course not, I was just messing with you. Today is Mother's Day. Yep, and we wanna wish all the amazing moms watching the service a happy Mother's Day. That's right, moms. Today is our day. So we earned it this year, didn't we? As many of us have become full-time teachers, chefs, event coordinators, trying so hard to keep our kids entertained during shelter in place, it's been exhausting, but today is our day to sit back and relax, huh? Uh, who am I kidding? I'm sure it's still gonna be a crazy day. No, mom, we totally got this. In fact, why don't you just relax? We'll take care of the rest of this intro. Okay, CLC. We are going to get we are going to get started with worship in two minutes. So take this time right now to share the stream. Invite someone to join you and say hello in the chat. In fact, why don't you share one of your favorite Mother's Day memories in the comments right now? Not bad. I told you we got this, but Dad's making lunch, so maybe we should order some pizza. Welcome back to a very special Mother's Day at CLC Online. My name is Cal and this is my daughter Cameron. Can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> it's time for my favorite part of service, worship. Cameron, you say yay! Yay! <laughs> so, here's what I need you to do. Stand up, get some room, because at CLC, worship is not a spectator sport. This is our chance to let God know all that He means to us. As we sing today, it doesn't matter if you're singing sounds like angels or something else, we can all make a joyful noise to God. Isn't that right, Kimmy? <laughs> As we worship today, my prayer is that you would have an encounter with the living God right where you are. Let's worship together.
nations as we praise you, as we adore you, Father. You are great. You are so great. And we will lift our voice to praise you.
Isn't it awesome to be able to connect with God from anywhere? But I can't wait to be able to worship God in the same room with all of you again. My name is Dane, and this is my amazing mom, Claudia. Well, thanks, amazing daughter, Dane. In a moment, those of you that call CLC home will have an opportunity to worship God with your giving. As always, there are multiple ways that you can give. You can give online, via text, or you can still mail your giving right here into the church. All the details for the ways that you can give are on the screen now. I would like to thank you for partnering with us financially during this time. Not only are you putting God first, but you're doing a lot of great things in the Chicagoland area, as well as across the world. And while you're getting your giving set up, I want to welcome those of you that are new to CLC. Maybe this is your first time checking us out, or maybe even your first time checking out any church. Either way, we are so glad that you are here with us today. Absolutely. And we would love the opportunity to connect with you. And there are a couple ways that you could do that as well. You could jump right in the chat and say, hey, I'm new. Or if you feel more comfortable, go right over to clc.tv forward slash new. There we'll be able to reach out to answer any questions you might have. We can pray with you or just see how we can better serve you. Hey mom, how about you pray over the offering now? How about we do? Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for blessing our lives, Lord. Jesus, we continue to trust you in every situation with all that we have and in all that we do. God, we ask that you would bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And while we wish we could personally honor every mom today, there are two very special moms at CLC that we could not forget about today. Take, Take a look. look. Mother's Day. Mothers are amazing. You all know that, right? If you want to climb the tallest mountain, your mother's going to make a lunch for you. She believes in your dreams when no one else does. And she also reminds you to wear clean underwear. And who would kiss boo-boos if it wasn't for mothers? And I just want to thank all of the mothers that are tuned in today because you, what you do is truly amazing, especially in this time of COVID-19 and sheltering in place. It's just, you know, you're cooking three meals, three meals a day. We're talking that the kids will eat, that's within the budget, that uh, is healthy, and have the ingredients on the grocery stores during the pandemic. You know, uh, thankfully, I have not been doing any cooking because of my broken ankle. Jen has stepped up and she's doing all the cooking and my husband is bringing home takeout and, you know, so I'm not a part of that. But besides being a cook, you're a counselor, you're a nurse, you're a housekeeper, you're the family uh, director for fun things because you're trying to keep the dreaded I'm bored and <laughs> down to a minimum. Uh, you do all these things and more, especially in this time and uh, season of stuck at home. Did I say stuck at home? <sighs> Sheltering at home, including teaching. Now, you know, I probably imagine sometime within the last two months, you've thought to yourself, <laughs> I did not sign up for this. If you have felt that way or thought that at all, just 
sign in on the comments below, be honest, be real. I'll tell you right now, I've said those things in my heart. But uh, the question is, did you sign up for this? I, it, this is the title really of our new series. I think it's gonna be very, very helpful, beneficial to all of us during this pandemic. Today, we're gonna be talking about Mary and how to go through hardships that are not necessarily something that's a fault of yours. Hardships that's no fault of your own. You know, I, I, Mary was a young mother, probably about 14 years of age, who just loved the Lord. But I don't think she got up one morning and thought, hey, you know what I want to be? I want to be the mother of the Son of God. Any more than you woke up sometime in March and thought, you know what? I'd like to be quarantined in my house for weeks on end and have my freedoms removed and maybe lose my job or lose loved ones. No, it just happened. And Mary didn't ask for the morning sickness that she experienced. She didn't, she didn't ask for the scorn uh, of neighbors because she was pregnant out of wedlock. Because back then that was a big no-no. I mean like stoning you to death no-no. She, she didn't ask for the way her husband looked at her thinking she was crazy or worse that she'd betrayed him. She didn't ask to ride a donkey for miles while nine months pregnant. She didn't ask for her son to be crucified, she didn't ask to watch that. But did she? We're gonna be talking about three questions that I think will help us in times of hardship. Three questions that we need to ask ourselves. And the first one is, Who's in control? Now the silence and calm of Mary's home was suddenly shattered with, with the appearance of an angel. And Mary just stared in shock silence as the angel said, oh, hail mighty woman of God, you're highly favored and, and uh, the Lord is with you and you're blessed above all other women. Now seeing the look on her face, the angel quickly tried to remove some of her concern and her fear, and he says, don't, don't be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And uh, quite, you're gonna, you're, listen, listen, you are going to be the mother of the Son of God. You're gonna call his name Jesus, he's gonna be the Son of the Most High. And just about that time, Mary stopped paying attention, she couldn't concentrate when, because the angels just kind of casually mentioned, you're gonna be pregnant. So when he finally looked like he was stopping, she voiced her concerns and she said, how, how's this gonna be? I mean, I'm a virgin. I mean, this is physically impossible. So the angel explained, it's not gonna be about anything you do. It is gonna be the power of the Most High God that will cause it to happen. And the Holy Child that comes is gonna come for the Holy Spirit. And he is gonna be called the Son of God. And, and that's not all. Listen to this. Your cousin Elizabeth, who everybody thought she was barren, she's gonna give birth to a son in just three months. And then in an effort just to remove all her fear, the angel ended by saying, for with God, nothing is impossible. Now I think that Mary's response to the angel's announcement really answers our question for point number one, who's in control. Mary said, you know what? I'm your servant. You, whatever you said, everything you said, actually, just do it. Do it in me. And you know what? She had a choice. She, she had a choice. And it's basically the same choice that you and I have today. You know, we can choose to make Jesus Lord of our lives and really commit our lives to him 
unconditionally and acknowledge his control of our lives, or we can struggle with the anger and depression, frustration and stress that comes from just feeling out of control. And you can struggle with all that all by yourself. You have that choice. Jesus being Lord and in control, or you going alone by yourself. You see, you know, he, if you've asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, it is going to determine how you respond to COVID-19 or any other hardship. It's going, to, it's going to determine how you respond because if Jesus is your Lord of your life, well, that means he's the ruler. He's the boss. He's the one in charge. He really is. And, and honestly, if he can't be Lord of every of your area of your life, he, he, can't, he can't be Lord. He has to be the Lord of your whole life. If he's not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. You may think that you didn't sign up for this, but you know what? I think maybe you did when you made Jesus your Lord. Just like Mary did when she said, here I am, I'm your servant. Your, let your word be fulfilled in me. When we commit our lives to the Lord, we're saying we're going to trust him to be in control through the good times and the bad times and the horrific times. See, we're going to trust him in hardships like COVID-19. I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 from the Passion Translation. We all experience times of testings, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face so you can be able to bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that you may be able to come out of it victoriously. Have you chosen to make Jesus your Lord? Uh, not just Savior, but, but Lord. The problem with the typical church goer is that we just, we want Jesus to be our Savior. You know, they, they want to be Savior. They, they want the eternal fire insurance uh, that comes with being a Christian. They want the benefits. They want the loaves and the fish blessings. They want Jesus to be a blesser, but they don't want him to be boss. What about you? Have you made Jesus Lord the boss of your life? If you have, give me a thumbs up or a wave or something to let me know that you've already made this decision that he is Lord. John 16, says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have over." Come the world. When Jesus is your Lord, you can have peace because you know that together you and he can conquer any hardship that you might be experiencing, including COVID-19. And after COVID-19 is defeated. So the next question I really want you to ask yourself is, what can I learn from this? Uh, is pondering a part of your spiritual disciplines? Have you practiced that? Mary did. Three times uh, in Luke's account, the story of the birth of Jesus, it says that Mary pondered these things in her heart. You have to understand, this was extraordinary events that was happening to this young mother. She wasn't prepared for it. She didn't know what to even think about it. So she pondered. She whirled around in her mind. She tried to understand. Time passes quickly. And before the close of this chapter, Luke uh, records the account of Jesus at 12 years old, going with his parents to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Now, when the festival was over, Mary and Joseph left for home, assuming that Jesus was in the group of 
pilgrim somewhere. After traveling a full day, they went to look for him among their relatives and neighbors, and they couldn't find him. They panicked, just like, like we would. If, if, if our child is missing, they panicked, and they immediately went back to Jerusalem. But they searched for him for three days before he, they found him hanging in the temple, asking, you know, the teachers, the scholars, the priests questions. Now, I want to tell you that this young man, uh, they were all taken with him. They were really impressed with his understanding of the depth uh, of the things they were discussing and even his answers, his wise answers to their questions. But let me tell you, Mary and Joseph, not impressed. <laughs> Mary was like any mother in that condition would be. She just lit into Jesus. She said, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? Don't you know your father and I were literally out of our minds with worry trying to find you? And then Jesus said, why were you looking for me? Don't you know that I have to be here in my father's house? Mary didn't understand. So she pondered, along with those other things, pondered and thought about it in her heart. And that's what we should be doing in times of hardship ourselves. We should be pondering. We should be thinking, God, is there something here that you want to teach me? Because I'm telling you, he does want to teach you. Psalm 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Even in hardship, he wants to teach us. Now, I know that we think that the devil is behind every hardship, including COVID-19. And he probably is. But what we need to remember is that God is behind the good, the bad, and the extremely ugly. He's still behind the scenes. He's still working things out. Romans 8, 28 in the Passion Translation says, so we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan for bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design purpose. So even in the ugly, even in the hard stuff, God's weaving something together. Something that will help us and uh, develop us and teach us. What can you learn? Quiet your heart and mind so you can hear God and understand the lessons he's trying to teach you through every hardship. Though you might not have signed up for it, I understand, but I guarantee that God has something that he wants to teach you in it right now. I, I know that God is trying to teach me to rest. And my family's probably all nodding their heads and saying amen when they hear this. I mean, it's not just uh, the lockdown sheltering at home. I mean, I broke my ankle bad and I can't walk. So I have to sit and rest. My only hope is that I really learn this lesson. I learn it when I go back to life as normal because life, you know, may never be as it was, but it, it's going to be better. And I, I want to learn this lesson because I, I feel like God has tried to teach me this lesson before and I want to learn it this time. So my question to you is, what is God trying to teach you? What can you learn in your present season, in your present hardships? Uh, is he teaching you how to be more empathetic with others or how to take care of your neighbors? Is he teaching you how to be a more engaged parent? Or maybe he's trying to teach you what's truly important in life. Or maybe he's trying to teach you like he's trying to teach me how to rest. 
and keep life in balance. You know what? If you can, if you know what God is trying to teach you, would you just write it out in the comments below? Because what God is teaching you might help someone else in their lessons. Now, the last question that we need to ask ourselves is, who can I lean on? While the soldiers were gambling for Jesus' coat, his mother, aunt, the mother, uh, Mary of Clopas, uh, and Mary Magdalene were all there by the cross. And Jesus, in his agony, looked down from the cross and saw his mother and saw John standing near her. And he said to her, Woman, your son. And to John, he said, your mother. What he was doing was putting Mary into John's safekeeping so she could get strength for her new son, from her new son. Now, have you thought ever really thought about what it must have been like for Mary uh, watching her son be crucified? It was the most gruesome, horrible, most painful, bloody death possible at the time. I'm sure that when they, she saw the soldiers pierce Jesus' side, she remembered the prophecy of Simeon who said, and the sword will pierce your very soul. I honestly can't even begin to imagine what Mary went through as she watched her son in agony. But, Here's something I learned this week when I was studying that I never really thought about before. Jesus would not give up his spirit. He would not die until Mary was taken care of, until Mary had someone to lean on. All of us need someone to lean on in times of hardship. And, and really COVID-19 has taught me that. It's taught me that I need people now. In the beginning, I was just, you know, wondering what ministry would look like because the world was changing and, and therefore ministry needed to change also. But then I got a call that my brother, uh, his uh, emergency health response team was getting deployed again in a couple days. So I needed to go to Michigan, to Detroit area to be with my mom and dad and take care of them while he was gone. Rich left and I was in the house for about three hours when my dad died in his bed. I'm so thankful I was there. I'm so thankful I was there to help my mother through it all. But you know, it was exactly a week later, somebody was pounding on her door and I jumped up to run to get it and my foot, kind of my toes stuck on the rug. And as I went down, I heard the crack and I knew something was broken. I was in absolute agony. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't move. At first I couldn't talk. When I finally did, you know, my mom's saying, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? And, and I, I broke something. A neighbor came in through the door and said, what's wrong? Can I get you up? I go, no, don't touch. I can't get up, too much pain. I called my daughter in Chicago and I said, I think I broke my foot. Uh, you need to come to Detroit. I'm sorry to ask you to come again, but you, you need to come to Detroit to pick up grandma and me. I can't take care of, I can't, I can't take care of the, I can't take care of anything. Four and a half, five hours when she got there, she wasn't alone. Adia, who watches our dogs, and her mom, Ruby Powell, had traveled all the way from Chicago to Detroit. 
so they could take home the dogs since I couldn't handle them and to drive my car back to Chicago so then Jen could drive my mom and I and take care of us back in Chicago. We drove the next day. And I think about it. They drove nine hours in one day. They were in that car to help me because I, I needed, I needed people. I couldn't, I couldn't do it by myself. And Jen came, brought my mom and I back. She was taking care of us. And, and then uh, I had a couple of seal seers that brought us meals that first week, which was very, very, very welcome. And trying to help my mom and, and that's in this, this season of staying at home and dealing with grief, you know, we took up making jigsaw puzzles. My mom likes them and we just, that became our thing. Well, the problem is we, we put together both puzzles and we didn't have anything else to do. And, you know, I checked out all good old Amazon and uh, they could give me a puzzle. They could get me a puzzle by the first week in June. Now this was the beginning of April. So I didn't know, I didn't know, what was I gonna do with, my, what was I gonna do? So I just posted on Facebook and I said, hey, my mom and I have been doing puzzles, but we can't find any, does anybody have any used puzzles? And the response was overwhelming. We have so many puzzles that we could probably do them until the, until the beginning of summer. It's a CLC responded. People responded. I needed people and they were there. I wept in my daughter's arms. I wept in my husband's arms. I, I wept together with my mom. You know, there are times, you know, especially the loss of a loved one, you, you need somebody to lean on. Or, or if you've got problem after problem after problem until life just seems like it's falling apart, you need somebody to lean on. Somebody that you can talk to that won't judge you or quote scripture at you. Someone who will give you advice if you ask for it. Someone who will distract you with it and make you smile sometimes. Somebody, you know, who will pray for you. Someone who will cry with you. Someone who will share the load with you. Sometimes we just need Jesus with skin on. Now, I've been very concerned here lately because I'm just sensing that one of the consequences of social distancing it is that some of us are pulling back emotionally, kind of retreating. Oh yeah, there's some of you that are just chopping at a bit. You can't wait to get with people. But there's some, I feel like, are getting comfortable with everything being online. And they will use fear as an excuse not to connect with people again and not to lean on people and not to depend on people. So. I just want you to know, every one of us, God created us with this need. We need people. We need people during this pandemic. We need people after it is all over. And if you have family or friends and you need some, call your family, call your friends, connect with them in some way, connect with your church family. And if you are so isolated, alone, you don't have family or friends, then contact the church in some way and we will connect you with someone. Uh, connect with a small group online. Just step out like I did with the puzzles. Step out, make your need known, and someone will be there that you can lean on in time of hardship. Can I just pray with you a moment? Father, we love you more than words can say. I want to thank you for loving us and for helping us, for giving us people to lean on, for, for giving us lessons that we can learn, for helping us to remember that you are in charge and you are in control and nothing is going to happen to us. But you and we together 
can't handle. I pray for those that are right now feeling isolated and alone, that you will wrap your arms of love around about them and give them the courage to reach out and let somebody know they need you. You with skin on. We thank you for the life change of everyone, not only those of us going through pandemic, which is all of us really, but also after pandemic, that we'll always remember that we need each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, yeah, we are all in this together. We're all going through social distancing and going through sheltering at home, but not everyone is experiencing the same hardships. So I just want to remind you of a scripture. It's found in 1 Peter 4, 8 through 10. It says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. So I just want to challenge all of us to be Jesus with skin on this week. Uh, parents, get your children involved. In fact, every day, reach out to somebody because you will make a difference in their lives. Just like you all made a difference in my life during this season. God bless you because honestly, he is going to. <laughs> He's going to bless you for everything that you do. And we will, hear me, we will get through this together. Have a good day and happy New Year's Day. What a wonderful word, Pastor Chris. Hi, I'm Taisha. Hi, I'm Neil. And we pray that you were blessed today by the opening message of our brand new sermon series, I Didn't Sign Up For This. Mom, did you sign up for this? <laughs> Over the next three weeks, we'll continue to take a look at the lives of biblical figures who faced hardships and uncertainties and learn how their lives can help us face our current realities. We also have multiple times of teaching and worship throughout the week to help you refuel and recharge. The schedule will be on the screen at the end of today's service. Mom, is it time? Yes, it's time. Let's pick our winner for the special Mother's Day giveaway. Last week, we asked you to post a picture of your mom on social media and tell us why you think she's the best. Mom, you're the best. Thank you, but let's pick a winner. Thank you to everyone who participated. And our winner is... Nisha Stringfella, congratulations. As our time together draws to a close today, we want to remind you all of the resources available for you and your family on our church's app. If you don't have it yet, just text CLCTV to 77977 and you'll find everything from weekly services to activities for your children and more throughout the week. If you need prayer, don't hesitate to reach out to us in the comments or go to CLC tv slash prayer we would love to pray with you and we're looking forward to connecting with you again happy mother's day be blessed may the lord may the lord the lord bless you the lord bless you the lord bless you and keep 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 you the lord make his face shine upon you 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 and be gracious to you. 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 Gracious to you. Gracious to you. The Lord lifts up the continent. His countenance. His countenance. Oh, yes, upon you. Comforting. Comes upon you. Countenance. His countenance up on you. Gives you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. Give you peace. And give you peace. Give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.